about what all they offer and the differences between hospice offered in Ireland and the US. There are several aspects of nursing care that are different in Ireland when compared to the United States. Palliative and hospice care is not the same as here. In Ireland, it is a physical location, not a concept. Regarding nursing education, in Ireland, you specialize in school rather than after. You can also get a certificate to become a nurse prescriber where you can prescribe medications. Midwifery is also its own specialty and is a separate nursing practice. In Ireland, you can graduate from college with a Bachelor's of Science degree in midwifery. Nursing shortages are also evident in Ireland. Ireland's nursing workforce is filled with nurses across the world, and during COVID, they weren't able to fill all the nursing positions necessary. However, since the beginning of the pandemic, their sh shortage has greatly improved. Therapeutic communication is very similar across both Ireland and the United States. It was unique to discuss this concept with leaders from the Department of Health. We discussed how nursing is one of the most trusted professions, and part of the reason is because of therapeutic communication. However, there are aspects of communication that are different, such as the slang they use and their use of Gaelic and English. Beyond our experiences, we also got a chance to explore and learn the history and culture of Ireland. So some of the wonderful things we got to experience were the Book of Kells in the old library at the College of Trinity. The Book of Kells is a manuscript that is from 800 CE, and the long room of the old library pictured there on the slide contains over 200,000 of Trinity's oldest books and other artifacts, including Ireland's own uh, copy of their Declaration of Independence. Another one of the famous places we got to see were the, was the Guinness Storehouse. Um, the Guinness Brewery was founded there in 1759 and is at one point one of the largest in the world. It is so popular in Dublin and Ireland that our tour guide stated that they used to say, drink a pint of Guinness to pregnant uh, expecting mothers you know, for health. <laughs> and then pub life was very evident in Ireland. We got to visit um, multiple while we were there, and almost everyone had live music playing with lots of people. Uh, the pub culture allows people to meet up and tell stories and have some crack, or as they say, fun. Um, <laughs> some of the pubs even were sites of sessions for where local musicians would meet up and share music together. We also went to St. Patrick's Cathedral in Dublin, which is the National Cathedral of the Church of Ireland, as well as Ireland's largest cathedral. While touring it, the priest who was there took me and the group I was with to some of his favorite places inside. Though I was grateful for the tour he was giving us, it left me and the group and I were on tight time to get to our next event. I'm not joking when I say I ran a mile through Dublin to get to the next event on time. Clan McNoise was also a highlight of our trip. It is a ruined monastery and home to three original high crosses. The history here was nothing short of incredible, and it's a stop I certainly won't forget. While the weather certainly followed us there, they tell us they had mild winters, but it happened to snow the last few days we were there, you know, luckily for us. <laughs> So we got to actually see some amazing sites out in the countryside, including uh, Bun Bunratty Castle. It was built all the way in the 1400s and was restored, and you were able to get a tour in there in the local folk, folk village around, which is really cool. We got to also visit Dunguar Castle, which was built in the 1500s. Um, tours were not open there, but it was still very beautiful. I mean, it's a castle, but come on. <laughs> we also got to see the Burren National Park on the way to the Cliffs and Moor. Uh, the sites we got to see included mountains, uh, farmland, ancient burial sites, caves, uh, ruins, endless stone walls, and uh, plenty of sheep and cattle, including a freshly born one I got to see uh, while we drove by. Um, and then we, got, of course, got to see the beautiful Cliffs of Moor. Is run, it runs around nine miles along the coast of the Atlantic Ocean and is one of the most popular sites to visit in Ireland. The views are breathtaking, and thankfully when we visited, the sun had decided to come out. The snow was still there, though, so along the walkways, it was a little treacherous with a few slip-ups here and there. Uh, some of the views may be familiar from the Cliffs of Moor as they did film scenes from The Princess Bride and Harry Potter there. 
Overall, our experience in Ireland was one we cannot forget. We learned about the impact nursing has on their community and how important family involvement and care is. The kindness everyone always welcomed, with, welcomed us with was something that I hope to do one day as well. Each individual in Ireland brings so much value and together they build a wonderful community. With that said, we would like to extend the biggest thank you to everyone who made this trip possible. Thank you, Dr. Rowe, Decker, and Karen Brown Fackler for leading and preparing us for the trip. To all of the trip participants for making this global experience so memorable. To the SVSU Study Abroad Office and faculty for making this possible, and especially our families. We appreciate each of you and your encouragement more than you know. Thank you. My name is Anna Peruski, and I am going to be sharing my study abroad experience with you in Milan, Italy. I'm going to be talking about the impact it had on me, the culture, cultural experience I had, and how this applies to my nursing practice. My trip was through Atlantis. Atlantis offers hospital shadowing experience to pre-medical students. I spent the week with a group of 12 other students who were interested in the medical field. For five days, five hours per day, I got to shadow doctors in a nationally recognized oncology hospital. The doctors were able to speak English, so they translated for me. I spent most of my day rounding with the doctors, sitting in on visits, and watched invasive surgeries. In my shadowing experience, there are a few things that stuck out to me. First, the windows in the hospital were big and offered a lot of natural light. This natural light brought a sense of positive and uplifting energy throughout the hospital. The staff was also so kind. I was assigned a doctor, but many of the other doctors were constantly trying to get me to see things with them. Outside of the patient experience, I was also invited to the staff Christmas party. This was an interesting experience considering I didn't know any of them and I didn't speak Italian. But as they told stories in Italian, many of them came up to me and told these random stories to me just because they cared. Many patients also greeted me and attempted to have a conversation with me despite not speaking a lot of English. I also picked up on a lot of nonverbal communication and noticed how important body language is. I sat on an, in on a visit with a doctor who was having a follow-up conversation with a patient. His body language drastically changed when he had to tell a patient there were no more treatment options for him. Outside of the hospital, I was able to experience the culture of Italy in the city of Milan, which is the fashion capital of the world. Milan is also famous for the Duomo, Italy's largest church. I saw the outside, went inside, and even got to go on top. The church is filled with beautiful statues and stained glass. It also holds one of the nails that was on the cross of Jesus. Of course, the food was incredible. I thought the pasta was great, but the pizza was better. We had two days of free time. One day, we went to Lake Como, and the other, a friend and I took a train to Switzerland. We hiked the Swiss Alps to the bottom of a glacier. We also went to St. Moritz, a famous ski town where the Winter Olympics were held. And of course, we tried their delicious chocolate. Overall, there are a few things that stuck out to me that will impact my nursing practice. First, I noticed the slow pace of life in Italy. I have tried to practice this in my own life, but nursing school has certainly made that challenging. But as I go forward in my nursing career, I will slow down and listen to my patients talk, not rushing to go to the next thing, but actively listening to them and being present in the moment. Italians also walk almost everywhere, rain or shine. As a nurse, we promote health and wellness. I want to live that out, and walking is a simple way that I can do that. And the friendliness there, whether it was a simple conversation or a smile, it made me feel safe and comfortable despite being so far away from home. I so deeply remember this feeling, and as I care for patients, I hope to make them feel cared for and welcomed like I did in Italy. 
I would like to thank my Grandpa Dave and Grandma Lynn for planning family vacations that made me want to travel. I would also like to thank my dad for continuing to make travel and adventure possible on our own trips. I would like to thank the Global Foundation Scholar faculty, the lifelong friends I made through Global Foundation Scholars, Cody Albert, Riley Hupfer, Louise Chen, Kate Scott, and Dr. Kelch. Thank you. I have a few more things to say. This is Abby Lang. We are going to share with you a project that is close to our heart, Lotus. We will walk you through how this project started, what it looks like now and what it is, what we have planned, and the many people that are responsible for the success thus far. I'm from Oxford, Michigan. So the shooting that happened in November 2021 deeply impacted me. My brother was a senior at the time, and my parents were teachers in the district. The pain and hurt that I felt was nothing compared to that of those that were more directly involved. With this perspective, I realized what a blessing it was for my brother to come home from school that day. In the midst of such pain, I wanted to use my blessings to help others. I reached out to former president, President Bashand, to see what the university could do. He generously offered his time and connected me with Dr. Dittmeyer, who suggested creating a healing garden. But because it's cold for most of the time that students are on campus, we decided to transition this into a room that offers peace and wellness for students. We shared our idea with SVSU students and faculty, and we received nothing but excitement and support. At our first group gathering in November, over 40 students showed up. WNEM TV5 also reached out to us and asked us to do an on-air interview. Lotus's mission is to promote mental, physical, and emotional health and create a healthier SVSU community. To carry this on, we developed a leadership team. We are so grateful for each and every one of them, and they bring so much value to this project. Together, they organized our first meet and greet and promoted Lotus, and we had an incredible turnout. They also organized our first painting event where we ran out of canvases for students. We truly are in awe of the community's support. This painting event was more than just an event, though. Students were creating what would be in the room. In the room, we will have the canvases created by students hung on walls. We will also have several other features, such as a plant wall, a small waterfall, and an individual space for students to reflect. We will also have a resource section available to students and will include things such as wellness books and journal prompts. Overall, the room serves to be a safe place for reflection and wellness. Everything going into it is intentional and is evidence-based. The pictures you see here are not the finished project. This is just the beginning of the process. Here is an image of our vision for one of the walls, and I'm excited to say that we've received some of the items to start this, and it is looking very similar. We also want to reiterate that in the creation of this project, research has been a priority. Any resources available are evidence-based and serve a purpose. We are beyond excited to share this project with the community in the fall. We have a lot of people to thank, but we would like to start with our nursing community because the background of learning how we can care for people help facilitate the development of caring for students in this way. We would also like to thank past president, President Bashan, Dr. Dittmeyer, Brett Boswinkel, Mohamed Adel, Patrick Alvarez, Anthony DeRusso, Kelsey Lipinski, Trisha Charbonneau Ivy, Kim Martini Tolth, Jill Brown, Sasha Neff, Elizabeth Evers, Emma Thompson, Trevor Vance, our close family and friends, our Lotus leadership team, and of course, the students of SVSU. This project has been for students and by students, and we intend to keep it that way. We look forward to how this will grow in and outside of our nursing careers 
and we hope that you will follow us on our journey as the room is opening in the fall. Thank you. This is Elizabeth Wollenson. We are both fellows in the Program of Distinction Robert Gilbertson Fellowship at SVSU. We are going to talk briefly about the Robert Gilbertson Fellowship Program and how it has impacted our nursing careers. The Robert Gilbertson Fellowship Program is a program that involves intellectual growth, leadership opportunities, and global citizenship development. We engaged in readings each week and went to three three-hour weekly seminars on Friday, which we have Dr. Frederick and Dr. Fabro to thank for allowing us to make up assignments when we missed. In seminar, students engaged in discussions in a professional setting. These discussions included leadership, racial and gender discrimination, inequality, and responsibilities of global citizens. Students also journaled and engaged in self-reflection on readings in their leadership and professional and personal lives. We were also divided into groups to lead service projects with community partners. We focused on global citizenship through our weekly readings and discussions, and we hosted international exchange student events. Elizabeth and I will also be furthering develop our global citizenship as we travel to Japan and Taiwan this Sunday. Nurses are patient advocates, and as patient advocates, we are leaders. Robert Gilbertson Fellowship provided us an opportunity to improve aspects of leadership that are so important in nursing, including communication skills, collaborating with other professionals, using critical thinking skills, and adapting to change. Elizabeth is now going to walk through how Gob Robert Gilbertson Fellows has helped us in each of these areas and why it's important in nursing. Hello, everyone. Communication is extremely important in nursing. Within nursing school, we have had entire lessons and classes dedicated to developing our communication skills since it is so important within our profession. In Robert Gilbert Fellowship, we were encouraged to speak up and express our thoughts, opinions, and disagreements with each other. In order to further develop our professional communication skills, we had a public speaking seminar where we learned to be able to be more comfortable with public speaking as well as our strengths and weaknesses with public speaking. Collaboration is another important skill that we nurses need to have. During nursing school, we frequently collaborated with occupational therapy students during our simulations because in our careers, we will have to collaborate with our patients, our, their family members, our colleagues, and an interdisciplinary team in order to provide the best possible care for our patients. In Robert Gilbert Fellowship, we collaborated with the CAN Council in order to create a service project that best fits their need. We also collaborated with the international students here on campus in order to learn more about their cultures. Critical thinking is a phrase that every nursing student is familiar with. Because as nurses, we must be able to critically think about our assessments in order to prevent complications from happening to our patients, as well as implement appropriate interventions. In Robert Gilbert Fellowship, we had weekly readings that we were encouraged to critically think about and reflect further in our journals. We also were critically thinking about our service projects in order to make sure everything was accounted for and that everything ran smoothly. And finally, we have adaptability. As nurses, we have to be adaptable because anything can happen. Our patient conditions may change, staffing might change, our assignments might change. We must be ready for anything that happens. Within Robert Gilbert's Fellows, Anna and I became more adaptable to include our Robert Gilbert Fellowship assignments. We managed our schedules to com and we also managed to complete all of our nursing requirements in order to make sure we were adequately prepared for seminars every week and we attended all of our other commitments. We would like to thank Dr. Foss and Dr. Nichols, which are Robert Gilbertson Fellowship professors. We would also like to thank Dr. Frederick and Dr. Fabro, the 24th class of Robert Gilbertson Fellows, and of course, our nursing cohort. 
Thank you again. My name is Abby Lang, and this is Shelby Chedoreski, and we are both going to be presenting on research projects that we did throughout our nursing school career. During most of my nursing school career, I have been working on a research project that focuses on nursing students' perceptions of their therapeutic communication. After my first semester of nursing school, Dr. Rowe told me that if I was ever interested in research, to let her know. I didn't know much about research at the time, but I am not one to pass up a unique learning opportunity. So I told her I was interested. I started generating ideas with my grandma and looking into the literature to see what I was interested in researching and therapeutic communication with nursing students was it. In the literature, I found that therapeutic communication was an area that both students and practicing nurses can struggle with. I also found that using a guided form of communication may be helpful. In a dissertation completed by occupational therapy students in North Dakota, a guided form of therapeutic communication based on Gary Chapman's five love languages was used. Other studies identified the love languages as an effective form of communication. Therefore, first semester students were educated on a guided form using these skills. They then practiced these skills in both simulation would, or what we call integration and clinical. Surveys were distributed at the end of the semester to fall 2022 and winter 2022 cohorts to evaluate their perceptions of therapeutic communication. Second semester fall 2022 students also received a survey to evaluate their therapeutic communication skills as well. Overall, it was found that nursing students who were educated on this guide were more confident than those who were not. Several themes were also identified. Students felt that using this guide improved the nurse to patient relationship, improved their confidence, and helped them assess and meet patient needs. There is little literature, there is little research using Gary Chapman's five love languages as a communication tool in nursing. However, as it relates to the literature, using a guided form improves nursing students' confidence ability to provide patient-centered care, and improves their willingness to talk to patients. Based on this, it may be effective to implement this guide in simulation in clinical settings. However, more research needs to be done. This past semester, I had an incredible opportunity to present my research findings in the Midwest, at the Midwest Nursing Research Conference in Des Moines, Iowa. I was able to listen to several wonderful and respectable researchers on some of the most recent and innovative research. Attending this conference opened my eyes to how important research is and enabled my passion for it to grow. And for that, I will forever be grateful. With that said, I can't express my thanks enough to Dr. Rowe for inspiring me, mentoring me, and overseeing this project. To Dr. Lang for coming with me to the MNRS conference to Dr. Dittmeyer for stopping by to learn about my project at the Undergraduate Research Showcase and continuing to mentor me, to Dr. Thornton for letting me come in to the integration courses, to Dr. Cox for additionally overseeing the project, to, for students and faculty for participating and supporting me, to the SPSU Foundation and Lane Family Foundation for supporting me and making the trip to Iowa possible, and lastly, my family. Without you and your support, I could have never started or completed this project. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Shelby Chedoreski, and I have had the pleasure of tutoring nursing students for the past two years at SVSU. The past two semesters, I had the honor of creating workshops for the first semester nursing students with the Tutoring Center Director, Elaine Hunyadi, and nursing students, Ashwin Mulyandar and Jenna Hine. We created three workshops where we implemented concept map creation, case studies, and NCLEX practice. We focused on the concepts pain, diabetes, and cardiac, and presented this information in a hands-on and interactive way to 30 to 60 students at each workshop. Elaine and Ashwin and I had the opportunity of presenting our results and success at the teaching 
Academic Survival and Success Conference in Fort Lauderdale this past March in hopes of encouraging other schools to do the same for their programs. We received wonderful feedback from other educators at the conference. Many of them asked me, as a tutor, what they can do to help their tutors at their school. I was so glad that I was able to make such a difference. We asked the students to take a survey after each workshop, and they shared that our workshops really helped them to understand the content that we reviewed. Throughout making these workshops, I was able to learn more about different styles of teaching. This opportunity opened me up to being a future educator in nursing. I would like to thank Dr. Scott, Rowe, and Smalley for collaborating with us on this project. I would also like to thank Elaine Hunyadi, director of the Tutoring Center, for opening my eyes so much to my love for nursing education. Thank you. I'd like to thank the students for their wonderful presentations on study abroad, the Lotus Room, the Roberts Gilbertson Fellows, and the research projects that were presented. Let's give them another round of applause. They were outstanding. <laughs> Next, we will have the journey from student to graduate nurse, and it will be presented by Shelby Chatereski, Rochelle Pompey, Gracie Mendel, Megan Graham, and Madeline Raisin. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Shelby again. <laughs> and I, will be st I want to start off by thanking all of the wonderful parents, family, and friends that could be here tonight to celebrate such an important night for us. It goes beyond measure how grateful we are for all of your support through our journey in the nursing program. I would also like to thank each and every professor, simulation staff, clinical instructor, and preceptor for shaping all of my classmates and I into the future nurses we are today. Nursing school was a wild ride an adventure, and a journey for all of us. Each semester pushed us to learn new content and comprised of different specialties in nursing. Each semester was another step in our journey of becoming nurses. <laughs> One last thing before we dive into that journey, I can't help but notice how lucky our patients will be to have such good-looking nurses. I'm not used to seeing all of you very dressed up, but you all look great, especially you, Deb. The start of our journey to become nurses begins with N1, the first semester of nursing school. I want to thank all of the educators that taught us the foundation of our nursing careers. Thank you, Drs. Rowe, Thornton, Huffman, Scott, Karen brown fackler and finally, Dr. Peruski. I'm going to touch on the very first semester of nursing school, a very special semester, and I mean special as it's a blur for most of us. I want all of my classmates to take a moment and think back to when you got that acceptance letter into the program. The excitement, the nerves, and the joy. What we didn't know was the challenges that we would face in this semester. Oprah Winfrey said, challenges are the gifts that force us to search for a new center of gravity. Don't fight them, just find a new way to stand. Remember that. This semester, we were tasked with three challenging courses, pharmacology, pathophysiology, and health assessment. That would lay the foundation for everything that we know today and will continue to learn. We had to adapt to new study habits, learning, and testing. We found a new way to stand. We participated in simulations that lay the groundwork for our clinical skills. Our clinical rotations, consisted of long-term care and rehabilitation centers where some of us experienced our very first times taking care of people. Although it was challenging, 
this is the semester that we found our people. Our people that we would spend the next two and a half years with, grow with, and become nurses with. I'm so thankful to have gone through this ride with all of you. Yourself and N1 would be so proud of you today, even though it seemed impossible to do at times. Remember that challenges will, conti will continue as you go to start your career. Don't fight them, just find a new way to stand. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rochelle, I'll be doing N2. The perfect quote to sum up N2 is, scared is what you're feeling, brave is what you're doing, from Anima Damahu. We've made it through the whirlwind that was in one, and we finally get to play the role of the nurse. We perfected our technique of inserting a straight cap into a pop bottle and performing sterile dressing changes on our perfectly crafted clay wounds to impress our clinical instructors via Zoom. We learned how to prime tubing and hang an IV piggyback just to forget everything when we got in front of the patient. We conquered our first run-in with the organized chaos that is known as med surge and learned that we might have something in common with the people we met during our group therapy sessions during behavioral health. A special thank you to Dr. Harmer, Dr. Cox, Dr. Hubert, and Professor Boots for guiding us through this part of our journey. We're gonna let the pictures finish here. Okay, perfect timing. Hello everyone, my name is Gracie Mandel and I will be speaking about our third semester. N3, the halfway point of nursing school. At this point, graduation is a year away. Those pesky face masks are finally gone and those polos that we hadn't worn since our very first day of N1 were finally being put to use. This was the semester that Dr. Lang took us on her amazing race through community and home health. During this time, we spent our clinical hours getting involved in our communities, volunteering at soup kitchens, domestic violence shelters, and elementary schools. We also spent more time in vaccination clinics, health departments, and even visiting our patients' homes. We also spent a lot of this time driving around, whether it was with our home health, nurse, home health nurses or with our fellow nursing students conducting our surveys because who knew knowing the number of churches, farms, gas stations, schools, and even touring a water waste treatment plant was important in becoming a nurse. Turns out, it is. Lastly, I would like to thank Dr. Lang, Dr. Kelch, and Dr. Kaufman for opening up this whole new side of nursing and supporting us through this semester. Thank you. Hi, my name is Megan, and I'm going to share on our N4 experience. Approximately eight months ago, we started the fourth semester of this nursing program. And I don't know about the rest of you, but eight months ago, the thought of introducing myself as a real nurse and not just a nursing student was absolutely terrifying. But this is where N4 came into play, with Doctors Hill and Toth continuing to remind us that we had to figure out what we were doing because graduation was about to come. And while well, they were right, because within a blink of an eye, here we are. In N4, we solidified our adult acute care knowledge and skills while applying everything that we learned in N1, 2, and 3. We also explored pediatric and OB nursing, where we witnessed labors and worked with infants and children. Some of us developed a strong passion for peds and OB, and they're gonna do amazing things with those populations in the future. While others of us, including myself, decided that we would much rather never have to work with those populations ever again, and that is totally okay. We continued finding our way, and although still terrified, finally began to feel like we could maybe introduce ourselves as a real nurse one day. 
A quote I believe summarizes N4 well is, success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love what you are doing or are going to do. N4 was arguably one of the most difficult semesters of this BSN program, but it was a challenge well worthwhile. Being here today is no accident. You all earned it and we deserve this. Doctors Hill, Toth, Huffman, Karen Brown Fackler, and The Rock, we cannot thank you enough for supporting us through N4 and through this nursing program. Thank you. Okay, my name is Maddie and I'm going to wrap us up with N5. To start this section, we need to thank those who have been the most supportive professors that we could have ever asked for during the last final stage in our journey. Without the help and amazing support of each of these faculty members, we would not have the skills and tools that we have today. We were just finishing our first semester two years ago when performing a single head-to-toe assessment at the end of the year was our biggest priority. Taking vitals on our patient was terrifying. We had a sense of uneasiness about what we were truly doing, but behind that feeling, there was a hope that one day we would figure it out. Two years ago, or two years later, we have encountered countless populations, countless institutions, and countless patients. This semester in particular, we spent our time in an intensive care setting while also participating in a leadership position in one of the many possible hospital units, similar to the internship we partook in last summer or spring. We have seen the youngest of patients experiencing their first moments to having the patients who have, have way more experience than we do. Some of us witness life being brought into the world and some of us witness life's last moments. Our combined experiences have been astronomical and will help us grow further into our careers than what we could have ever imagined. Speaking of careers, it was the semester of job applications, interviews, and accepting offers. Whether we choose to stay in the area or travel away, to work right after graduation or take a much well-needed break to whichever hospital and unit we, dis we choose, we know we are gonna make a difference. On our first day of class, we were asked to take a piece of paper and write our full name and then follow that with RN and BSN behind it. We were asked to put that piece of paper in constant view to remind us exactly why we were here. A binder, the bathroom mirror, our bedroom wall, wherever we would see it all the time even on those days in which we felt defeated, exhausted, or doubtful, the message would be clear. Today, we can finally say that we officially made it and we have earned the title rightfully. A final quote that I believe that fits this part of the journey well comes from Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She had said, whatever you choose to do, leave tracks. That means don't just do it for yourself. You'll want to leave the world a little better than you have lived. We are at the end of our journey, and today is a symbol for all of our accomplishments. Thank you, and congratulations to all. Now that our journey has come to an end, I'd like to extend one last thank you to the nursing faculty and the simulation faculty, and thank you so much for not laughing too hard at our very poor acting skills during simulation. And then I would also like to extend a humongous congratulations to the May 2023 nursing cohort. We did it. I'd like to thank the students for that wonderful presentation on the recognition of their um, journey from student to graduate nurse. Uh, next in our program, we're going to have the presentation of the history of the nursing pen by Camille Gray, Samantha Rosick, and Morgan Weiss. Followed by that, we will have the recognition of our graduates and symposium address from Dr. Marsha Mastraki dittmeyer our Dean of the College of Health and Human Services. We are so pleased to be here this afternoon as we share our journey through nursing school with you and celebrate our transition from students to registered nurses. 
The tradition of the nursing pin began with Florence Nightingale, who was a pioneer of the nursing field. A pin was given to Florence by the military in order to commend her for her service to them. She then designed her own pin to be given to other nurses for their services. This began a tradition that was carried on by many nursing schools and is still continuing today in some schools. The pin we are wearing today was designed by Roberta Kripe, a student from the first graduating class of Saginaw Valley State College School of Nursing in June of 1979. The triangle on the pin symbolizes the Tri-City area, Saginaw, Midland, and Bay City that surrounds Saginaw Valley State University. The dove and the olive branch was chosen by the first graduating class as a symbol of peace because they felt that nursing school was a peaceful art. Red was chosen as the color because it is the official color of Saginaw Valley State University. Honored guests who will be assisting with the pinning include Janet Ofori Darko, Jennifer Feeney, Heather Kruger, Terry Geyser, Dr. Jennifer Scott, our nursing family members, colleagues, and faculty. Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome all our colleagues, the graduates, family, and friends. As mentioned, I have the distinct honor of serving as the dean for the Crystal M. Lang College for Health and Human Services. First, I'd like to congratulate all of our graduates. I know that you have been looking forward to this moment for a very long time, that moment that you realize that you finally achieved your goal of becoming a nurse. This is a momentous occasion for you and one which you should be extremely proud of. So graduates, tonight's pinning ceremony signifies the completion of your journey of your BSN program and your official initiation into the nursing profession. This is a very special moment and as such is held separately from the university ceremony that will be held tomorrow evening. Of course, I do expect all of you to be there tomorrow night as well. Yes? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> The pinning ceremony, as just mentioned, is modeled from the ceremony in the 1860s when Florence Nightingale was awarded the Red Cross of St. George in recognition of her service during the Crimean War. Faculty and or mentors will be placing the pin on you tonight, sharing their words of congratulations. With your pledge to the profession, you commit to providing care with compassion and embedding humanism in the work that you do as a professional nurse, placing prime importance on the individual and family unit. Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon that we can use to change the world. You have come far, you've worked hard, and you have achieved your goal. You are now ready to go out and make your mark in the world. And I am so impressed by your effort your resilience, your persistence, your commitment that you have shown in your journey toward graduation. And I am sure that you will continue to rise to every challenge and overcome every obstacle with passion, determination, and dedication. This is truly a time for all of you to celebrate and honor our graduates' accomplishments. So to the families and friends who are here tonight, you have shown our graduates, by example, how to be bold and persevere. So I would like to thank you all. Nobody makes it to graduation alone. The support that you have given them and will continue to give them has been and will be immeasurable. To our faculty and staff, thank you, not only for being great educators that I know you all are, but also as mentors you have worked tirelessly to help our students reach this milestone. The one thing that I've learned during my life is that you are a product of all the experiences that you have, whether they're good or bad. And I guess our students shared that you have had many challenges when you came up here tonight or when they were up here talking. So whether they're good and bad, and trust me, you will experience both in your life. 
These experiences make us stronger, even though sometimes it may be hard to realize it at the time. The most common movie line I think that I always recognize, and that um, arguably his, is when something happens to a character and a family or friend turns to them to console them and they say something to the effect, I know how you must feel. However, typically the common retort to that is, you have absolutely no idea how I feel. This is because when an individual is feeling uh, stems from their personal lived experiences. So the first thought I always think is, unless you've gone through what I have gone through, you probably don't know how I feel. I say that because lived experiences matter for many reasons, not of least of which is only that the person who goes through them understands the nuances and the complexities of dealing with those experiences. So I don't profess to know the experiences that you have been through. I don't profess to know the experiences you're going to go through. I can only share with you a few things and a few of my own lived experiences that I've gone through. So first, live your life in the moment. Thinking back on my life, I realize now that I said, I think I'll do that later more times than I can count. However, the afterwards or the later, I realized the coffee was cold, my priorities have changed, the charm was broken, the good health passed, kids grew up, parents grew old, day became night, and to some of us, our loved ones passed. By leaving things for later, we can lose those best moments, the best experiences, the best friends, and even the best family. So live today and understand that you need to live in the moment. I ask you to also stay positive and use your growth mindset. Keep reaching for the stars. Those with a growth mindset put more energy into the learning in a way that is empowering. Commit to the journey, continually improvement. Look forward to challenges, even if sometimes they feel intimidating. Work toward high goals, no matter how long it may take you to get there, and persist through mistakes and failures as they become opportunities. Mahatma Gandhi once said, live as if you were to die tomorrow, but learn as if you were gonna live forever. Next, practice resilience. Resilience is the opportunity or ability to adapt well in the face of adversity in the ability to bounce back from challenges. One key way to build resilience is self-care. So take care of yourself and make every day meaningful. Resilience is a quality and a skill that can be enhanced. Find strategies that allow you to build your resilience. And lastly, understand that you don't know everything today, and that's okay. The world is very demanding, it's fast-paced, rapidly changing, and there's always something new chasing down the path of the old. It is not feasible to equip yourself with all of the knowledge and skills needed to prosper throughout your lifetime. The very definition of commencement is the beginning or the start. Your lifelong journey begins here and now. Good things do not always come easy, if you, were, if you want to have a good life and a successful career, emotional satisfaction, you have to work hard. Luck only takes you as so far, and the rest is entirely up to you. The amount of effort that you put into your every day and the ability to learn from your mistakes is extremely important. Nobody fights your battles the way you do. With that, I will close with a quote from Abraham Lincoln. The best way to predict your future is to create it. Today begins your next chapter. The destination is what you make of it. So on behalf of SVSU administration, faculty, and staff, it is my pleasure to congratulate you on the incredible success and the bright future you have ahead of you. Now remember, you will always be a part of SVSU community, so please come back and visit us often. We are very proud of you. Thank you.
like to thank the dean for those wonderful words of encouragement to our students and families. Next on our program, we are going to be having the presentation of students. Uh, the BSN students are going to be presented by Dr. Elizabeth Rowe and Dr. Jamie Huffman, uh, followed by the RN to BSN students by Dr. Tina Thornton. Students will be receiving roses from the SNA organization, and Sigma Theta Tau gifts will be presented by Professors Emeriti, um, Dr. Sally Decker, and Professor Mary Graver. Followed by this, so that I won't be getting up again, we will be having our closing remarks. And we also want to, our closing remarks will be coming from Dr. Mindy Fabro. And we want to thank our ushers, Dr. Judy Cox and Dr. Rose Lang, and everyone who took part in this program today. Thank you very much. Right. Danielle Lynn Bastine completed her leadership semester at Hurley Medical Center in the mother baby, mother baby unit. She hopes to accept a position in the neonatal ICU. She is graduating summa cum laude and a member of SNA. Congratulations, Danielle. Elizabeth Mary Blank completed her leadership semester at Covenant Healthcare in the Cardiac PCCU. She is hoping to start a position in the medical ICU or CVICU. She is graduating magna cum laude, an SNA member, and a Delight Ministries leader. Congratulations. Tabitha Marie Bunkowski completed her leadership semester at Ascension St. Mary's in their float medical surgical pool and hopes to accept a labor and delivery position in the Detroit area. She is graduating summa cum laude and a member of Sigma Theta Tau. Congratulations, Tabitha. Luke Gannon Brzezowski completed his leadership semester at My Michigan Health in the Medical ICU and has accepted a position at the Surgical ICU at My Michigan. He is graduating as an evidence-based evidence -based practice enthusiast. Congratulations, Luke. Haley Jean Cannon completed her leadership semester at Covenant Healthcare on the Pulmonary Medical Surgical Unit and has accepted a position at Covenant Healthcare and Progressive Care Unit 6 North. She is graduating cum laude. Congratulations, Haley. Annie Elizabeth Cox completed her leadership semester at My Michigan Progressive Care Unit and has accepted a position at Children's Hospital of Michigan in the emergency room. She is graduating cum laude. Congratulations, Annie. Shelby Lynn Chedereski completed her leadership semester at Covenant Healthcare in the Cardiovascular Neurotrauma ICU and has accepted her first nursing position at Henry Ford Macomb's Emergency Room. She is graduating magna cum laude and a member of SNA. Congratulations, Shelby. Claire Elise DeYoung completed her leadership semester at My Michigan Medical Center on Oncology and has accepted her first nursing position at Trinity Healthcare Medical Oncology. She is graduating magna cum laude and a member of SNA. Congratulations, Claire. Sophia Marie Falesco completed her leadership semester at Ascension St. Mary's in the Neurotrauma Intensive Care Unit and is accepted a position at Covenant Healthcare in the SICU. She is graduating cum laude and a member of SNA. Congratulations, Sophia. <laughs> Brooke.
Brooke Emily Nagy completed her leadership semester at McLaren Bay Regional Cardiac Step-Down Unit and has accepted a position at Sparrow Hospital in Lansing, Michigan on the pediatric unit. She is graduating magna cum laude and a member of SNA. Congratulations, Brooke. Megan Leanne Graham completed her leadership semester at Covenant Healthcare in the Cardiovascular Neurotrauma ICU and has accepted a position on the same unit. She is graduating summa cum laude, a member of Sigma Theta Tau, the National Society of Collegiate Scholars past president and a member of SNA. Congratulations, Megan. Camille Francine Gray completed her leadership semester at Covenant Healthcare in the Neurotrauma PCU as an accepted her first position at Michigan Medical Ann Arbor Cardiac Step-Down Unit. She is graduating cum laude and a member of SNA. Congratulations, Camille. Alexandria K. Greta completed her leadership semester at McLaren Flint's Neuroprogressive Care Unit and has accepted a position on the same floor. She is graduating as a member of Saginaw Valley Dance Team and a member of SNA. Congratulations. Annalise Joy Gunderman completed her leadership semester at Ascension St. Mary's in the Emergency Department and has accepted her first nursing position at Sparrow Lansing on their pediatric unit. She is graduating magna cum laude and a member of SNA. Congratulations, Annalise. Alyssa K. Heath completed her leadership semester at Hurley Medical Center in the PICU and has accepted a position at Alita E. Lutz VA Medical Center in their nurse residency program. She is graduating magna cum laude. Congratulations, Alyssa. Paige Marie Jackson completed her leadership semester at Beaumont Royal Oak and has accepted a position on 7 North Surgical Floor at Beaumont Royal Oak. She is graduating as a member of SNA and Pi Sigma Sigma alumni. Congratulations, Paige. Aaron Matthew German completed his leadership semester at Ascension St. Mary's in the Trauma ICU and has accepted a position at Ascension St. Mary's in the Neuro ICU. He is graduating magna cum laude and a member of Sigma Theta Tau. Congratulations, Aaron. Lydia Lana Krauss completed her leadership semester at Ascension St. Mary's in the emergency department and plans to accept a position at a hospital closer to home in the emergency room or ICU. She is graduating as a member of SNA. Congratulations, Lydia. Emily Ann Cooch completed her leadership, leadership semester at My Michigan Observational Unit and has accepted a position at Covenant Healthcare in their Labor and Delivery Unit. She is graduating cum laude and a member of SNA. Congratulations, Emily. <laughs> Debbie Lynn LaLiberty. Completed her leadership semester at Covenant Healthcare in the PCU. She's accepted a position, oh, hopes to accept a position at Covenant Healthcare in the PCU or Harrison CICU. She is graduating summa cum laude, a member of SNA and Sigma Theta Tau. Congratulations, Debbie. Abigail Crystal Lang completed her leadership semester at My Michigan Alma in PCU and CCU. She accepted her first position at Michigan Medical Intermediate Care Unit for Cardiac and General Thoracic Surgery. She is um, graduating summa cum laude, a member of SNA, and a Lotus co-founder. Congratulations, Abby. Madison Lynn Larson completed her leadership semester at McLaren Flint Oncology Unit and has accepted her first nursing position at Hurley Medical Center in the Neurotrauma Burn ICU Step Down. She is a member of SNA. Congratulations, Madison. Taylor Lucas completed her leadership semester at Covenant Healthcare in the orthopedic unit and hopes to accept an RM position at one of Covenant Healthcare's medical surgical unit. Taylor was a member of the varsity track and field as a triple long jumper, and she's a member of SNA. Congratulations, Taylor. <laughs> Taylor. 
Jamie Elizabeth Markle completed her leadership semester at Covenant Healthcare in the PCCU and hopes to accept a position on the cardiac unit in the Lansing area. She is graduating summa cum laude and a member of SVSU's marching band. Congratulations, Jamie. Darcy Ann Mayer. Darcy completed her leadership semester at Covenant Healthcare Orthopedic Medical Surgical Unit and has accepted a position at Covenant Healthcare Neurosurgical Unit. Congratulations, Darcy. <laughs> Michelle Marie McKeegan completed her leadership um, semester at My Michigan Midland Observation Unit and has accepted a position at My Michigan Midland Neurosurgical Unit Nurse Residency position, and she is an SNA member. Congratulations, Michelle. <laughs> Gracie Renee Mindell. She completed her leadership semester at Ascension St. Mary's NICU, and she's accepted a position at Sparrow Healthcare in the Emergency Department. She's graduating cum laude and is an SNA member. Congratulations, Gracie. <laughs> Anna Marie Peruski. She completed her leadership semester at Covenant Healthcare Progressive Cardiac Care Unit. She's starting a position in residential home care. She's graduating summa cum laude, a Robertson Gilbertson Fellow, Lotus Founder, and a Global Foundation Scholar. Congratulations, Anna. Rebecca Rose Peters. She completed her leadership semester at McLaren Bay Cardiac Floor. She's accepted a position at Covenant Healthcare Emergency Department, and she's an SNA member. Congratulations, Rebecca. <laughs> Rochelle Pompey. She completed her leadership semester at Hurley Medical Center Mother Baby. She's accepted a position at Covenant Healthcare Neonatal ICU. She's an SNA member. Congratulations, Rochelle. <laughs> Aliyah Rasmussen is not here tonight, but we would like to congratulate her. Mad <laughs> Madeline Cecil Raisin. She completed her leadership semester at Hurley Medical Center Pediatric Unit, and she's accepted a position at Covenant Healthcare Neonatal ICU. She's graduating magna cum laude. She's an SNA member and a member of Sigma Theta Ta. Congratulations, Madeline. Mary Grace Rembiz. She did her leadership um, semester at My Michigan General Surgical Medical Surgical Unit. She's accepted a position at Henry Ford Macomb in MICU. She's graduating uh, magna cum laude, and she's a Global Foundation Scholar and a member of Sigma Theta Ta. Congratulations, Mary. <laughs> it's not you. Stay here. <laughs> Leah Ashley Ridenauer. She did her leadership semester at Hurley Medical Center Emergency Department. She's accepted a, a position at Hurley Medical Center Emergency Department, and she's graduating magna cum laude. Congratulations, Leah. <laughs> Samantha Renee Rosek. She did her leadership semester at Hurley Medical Center Neurotrauma Intensive Care Unit, and she's accepted a position at Hurley Medical Center Cardiac Intensive Care Unit. She's graduating cum laude, and she's an SNA member. Congratulations, Samantha. <laughs> Emily Carolyn Sanders. She did her leadership semester at McLaren Bay Cardiac Stepdown Unit, She's accepted a position, or she hopes to accept a position, um, but still deciding where. Congratulations, Emily. <laughs> Rachel, Ma 
Ryan Scott Sawatsky. He did his leadership semester at My Michigan Healthcare Elma Medical Surgical Floor. He's accepted a position at My Michigan Healthcare Midland Neurotrauma ICU. Congratulations, Ryan. <laughs> Emily Renee Schmidt. She did her leadership semester at My Michigan Mount Pleasant Emergency Department. She's accepted a position at Duke University Hospital Medical Oncology Unit. She's graduating magna cum laude, and she's an SNA member. Congratulations, Emily. Sarah Kathleen Shibley. She did her leadership semester at Beaumont Hospital Royal Oak Post-Op Medical Surgical Unit, and she's accepted a position at Henry Ford Hospital Macomb Women, Women's and Children's Unit. She's graduating magna cum laude. She's an SNA member and a member of Alpha Sigma Alpha. Congratulations, Sarah. <laughs> Emmy Nicole Stoken. She did her leadership semester at Covenant Healthcare 5 East. She's accepted a position at Covenant Healthcare NICU. She's graduating cum laude. She's an SNA. She was the secretary and senior nursing student mentor. Congratulations, Emmy. <laughs> Robert Joseph Tetley. He did his leadership semester at My Michigan Joint Clamp. He's accepted a um, he hopes to accept, accept a position at either Covenant or My Michigan in a step-down unit, and he's an SNA member. Congratulations, Robert. <laughs> Jessica Mary Thies. She did her leadership sem semester at Ascension St. Mary's Neuro Intensive Care Unit. She's accept, she hopes to accept a position in an RN residency program. She's graduating cum laude. Congratulations, Jessica. <laughs> Natalie Jean Thompson. She did her leadership semester at McLaren Flint Med Surge Oncology Unit. She's accepted a position at McLaren Flint PCU. She's graduating cum laude. Congratulations, Natalie. Chidi Unobaga. She did her leadership semester at Ascension St. Mary's SICU. She's accepted a position at Covenant Healthcare 6 North Progressive Care Unit. She's graduation, graduating cum laude and she's an SNA member. Congratulations, Chidi. <laughs> Gracie Margaret Vendetti. She did her leadership semester at My Michigan Midland Progressive Care Unit. She's accepted a position at Vanderbilt University Medical Center, Nashville, Tennessee, Adult Float Pool Residency Program. She's graduating summa cum laude. She's the president of the Student Nurses Association and a member of Sigma Theta Tau. Congratulations, Gracie. Morgan Marie Weiss. She did her leadership semester at Ascension St. Mary's Medical Surgical ICU. She's accepted a position at My Michigan Midland Medical ICU Nurse Residency Program. She's an SNA member. Congratulations, Morgan. <laughs> Elizabeth Barbara Ann Wolinzen. She did her leadership semester at Ascension St. Mary's Town Center Emergency Department. She accepted a position at Henry Ford McCone Hospital in the Medical Intensive Care Unit. She's graduating summa cum laude, and she's a Roberts Gilbertson Fellow. Congratulations, congratulations Elizabeth. <laughs> Marissa Nada Zaccardi. She did her leadership semester at My Michigan Midland General Medical Floor. She accepted a position at My Michigan Midland's General Medical Floor. She's graduating magna cum laude, and she's an SNA member. Congratu congratulations, Marissa. <laughs> Hi.
Hi, everybody. I'd like to be um, proud to present our RN to BSN as well as our ADN to BSN graduates. Um, we have two students that are here today. I have Tina Shaw. She completed her RN to BSN program. She is a hospice nurse clinical supervisor um, with, a resident, with residential hospice. She plans to pursue her MSN. We also have um, Tanya Ransom. She completed the concurrent ADN to BSN program. She's an RN at Ascension St. Mary's. Um, she is graduating magnum cum laude, and she plans to pursue her MSN as well. Congratulations. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Mindy Fabro. For those of you that don't know me, um, I'm one of the professors in the nursing program that have the honor and privilege of teaching all of the graduates here today. I want to talk to our students a little bit before they go about their way. We are grateful you have chosen to be our next generation of nurses. It is a challenging and exciting time for the profession of nursing. We cannot wait to see the amazing things that you accomplish, the transformations that you will make, the new innovations you will implement to improve patient outcomes. I urge you to embrace the contributions that you will make in the healthcare setting. Believe in yourself and your ability to make an impact and create positive change. Be present for the patient. Be proactive to meet your patient's needs and advocate and protect them tirelessly. Remember to have a mind that is open to learning, a heart that is open to caring, a sense of humility, and of course, a sense of humor. We know each of you will make a difference as you embark on your career as a nurse. Be sure to make time for self-care, to check on your fellow nurses, and encourage one another. Be the first to praise your coworker for doing a great job or getting through a difficult shift. You are Saginaw Valley State graduates of the, one of the most challenging programs in the country. We are so very proud of you and we will continue to cheer you along as you go on your journey in nursing. Our doors will always remain open to you. Congratulations um, from the entire nursing department here at Saginaw Valley State University. We welcome you into the profession of nursing, and we are so proud to have you as our colleagues. May you love being a nurse. It is now time to end the ceremony instead of time to stop studying, right? And it's time to celebrate all that you have achieved. SBSU graduate nurses, please stand. <laughs> Could you please face your family and friends? Family and friends, thank you for giving these students the support and encouragement they needed to be successful in nursing school, along with the faculty and the staff here at SVSU. I am pleased to announce the newest class of SVSU BSN graduates. Congratulations. You are free to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs>